What is happening, everybody? It is Thursday evening, so a couple hours from now, actually a few hours from now, Thursday Night Football is going to be starting. Washington Commanders taking on the Chicago Bears. And here on this show, we're going to do really whatever it is that you guys want to talk about. We are sponsored here by Owner's Box. So I'm going to start by building out some lineups here on Owner's Box, and I'll actually start getting that going as I'm talking. We will start with the Thursday night game, and then also... We'll break down this weekend slate. We'll talk about the main slate and the owner's box contest. If you guys haven't played there, they are super flex, which is a nice little uh, differentiation between where you're going to get an owner's box compared to every other site is that you can play two quarterbacks. So it's a fun, different game format. If you guys haven't checked out owner's box yet, sign up using the link below because not only is that going to get you into owner's box, but also get one free week of all the data and tools we have over at stochastic.com, our contest generator, our simulation tools, player projections, ownership projections, all of that included one week totally free when you sign up at Owner's Box using that link that we have below. So uh, I'm going to start by talking about tonight's game. And if you guys want me to talk about the main slate more in depth, you could also ask me about that in the YouTube chat. Anything that's on your mind at all pertaining to uh, football or anything, really, throw into YouTube chat. We could definitely talk about that as we go here. But where we're going to start here going to build out some lineups for tonight's slate so we got that simulating right now it's only going to take you know a little bit not too long we got uh daniel barry sports highlights in the youtube chat saying hey what's up daniel what is going on so let's see what ends up coming up after we build out these lineups and then i'll simulate them we'll see which players we got to most most predominantly over on owner's box one thing really quick just kind of interested to see the lineups here. Which lineup is expected to be duped most often on owner's box? It is uh, Sam Howell in the multiplier spot with Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin, Khalil Herbert, and Brian Robinson. So this lineup ended up being the most heavily duped one there. Let's see. Before we sim, what is the contest payout to first? Shout out to uh, GST, EWG. I don't know what those uh, initials are. I don't know what that acronym is supposed to be, but yo to you too. GST, EWG. All right, let's see. What's the payout for owner's box tonight? So we have on owner's box, the big main contest is a $5,000 to first place, $2,500 prize pool. So let's go 20% to first for this. And then we'll simulate out the slate and see what ends up popping up. Who are the best multiplier options? Who are the best flex plays, value plays, all that kind of stuff. We're going to find out through the Sims tool in just a second. Do you, guys, do you guys have a strong lean on tonight's game? Bears, Commanders, who do you think is going to win? Washington's favored. I know for myself, personally, I like gut feeling is that I think the Bears are going to win, and I don't really have a whole lot of good basis for it, other than the fact that I thought Justin Fields looked exponentially better last week than he's looked in previous weeks. So I do think the line might be a little bit wide in that going to take the bears to win gets a little bit of a hot take since they're a decent size underdog but yeah i don't have i, I don't have a great feel for it by the way uh gst ewg followed up g stew all right my bad that does make more sense g stew number one overall projected lineup that we have by simulated roi best lineup that we have here it is Khalil Herbert in the multiplier spot with DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, Justin Fields, and Jahan Dotson. By the way, if you guys were playing showdown contests at the beginning of the year, but haven't played them recently over on Owner's Box, one thing that is different now is that earlier you could only play the quarterbacks in the super flex multiplier spot. Now you can play the quarterbacks wherever. You can build lineups in multiple quarterbacks. But anyway, by Sim ROI, that's our best projected lineup. So it's taking you know, ownership and all that into account. If we were to just look at projected fantasy points. They're just favored to the top 100. Actually, I probably shouldn't favor 150. What is max 60? All right, let's unfavorite these and let's favorite 60. All right, if we're max entering this, it would be 60 lineups. So there we go. Top 60 lineups for owner's box. And by sim ROI, that's our best lineup. What if we just sort by the highest projected lineups? So this is why also you'll see that it's important to sort your lineups and upload them based on what their simulated ROI is, not just necessarily the projection, because you could have a scenario where a lineup projects really well, but due to various factors, it might not be one of the best lineups by simulated ROI. So for instance, our top overall projected lineup by fantasy points, Justin Fields, Logan Thomas, 
Curtis Samuel, Brian Robinson, and Sam Howell. This lineup is not one of our 60 top lineups, even though it's projected for the most raw fantasy points. And that could be for a number of reasons. Could be due to the amount of dupes. It could be also be mean just because of the correlation of the lineups where the individual players might project well, but in an actual large field tournament setting, the, tour- the lineup doesn't play all that well because of how the players correlate with each other. Because the way our sims work is based on a play-by-play simulation. So each play that happens is going to impact future plays and everybody else's production. And yeah, so we simulate the games out 40,000 times based on that methodology. So this is our highest projected lineup, but not one of our top 60 lineups by simulated ROI. Holly Grove in the YouTube chat saying, I uh, think the commander's defensive line is going to dominate the Bears' offensive line. Yeah, uh, I mean, the that is probably the strength of the commanders is their front seven, and the Bears don't have the best offensive line in the world. But uh, Justin Fields, who I think a lot of us were probably pretty high on coming into the year, at least from a fantasy standpoint, sucked the first few games, no doubt about it. Did look a lot better last week. So hopefully that's a trend that continues for Justin Fields to get right on the on the good track and start producing some fantasy points for us again. But anyway, let's look at these lineups. And we do have Justin Fields we're getting the most exposure to in the multiplier spot. So 35% of Justin Fields in the multiplier spot, getting to him in 41.7% of lineups in the flex spot. So overall, north of 70% exposure to Justin Fields, our most rostered player in this game, which I have no issue with whatsoever. As far as the overall most rostered player in the flex spot here is Curtis Samuel, who's not projected for all that much ownership getting overweight to the field. So if you're looking to be a little bit different today, I think that Curtis Samuel is certainly one way you could go here. Uh, GC Samurai feels to be looking for another job next year. He's awful. Yeah. Uh, so at the very least, I, I, I don't totally disagree with you, but from a fantasy standpoint, which is primarily what we care about around here, he clearly has fantasy upside because of his rushing potential, which earlier in the year, we weren't really seeing a whole bunch. I'm going to pull up Justin Fields rushes per game because I don't have it memorized off the top of my head. And I think this paints a good picture of at least why I think he is more fantasy upside now than they might have had earlier in the season. All right. So Justin Fields, just in terms of volume, right? Last two weeks, four carries, 11 carries, not as many carries last week, but he was so much, he was so effective throwing the football. Last week, Justin Fields, 28 of 35 passing, 335 yards, four passing touchdowns. We never saw him really have the playbook open up to even allow him to throw the ball as many as 35 times last game. So the Bears are more willing to put the ball in his hands. Let me see last year. Yeah, so listen to this. Last year, Justin Fields never had 30 passing attempts in a game. The most he had in any one individual game was 28 in a game against the Dolphins last year. They end up losing the game 35-32. Fields a 17 of 28 passing for uh, 123 yards. In that game, he did rush the ball 15 times for 178 yards, which is primarily where he's going to get his upside from. But as far as Fields goes, I like him a whole bunch for this game, mostly because of his rushing upside and the fact that he did look more competent throwing the football and also the team is letting him throw the ball more this year than he has in previous years. And let's see what else we have here. A uh, Holly Grove following up saying, the commander's defense is better than the Broncos' defense. Agreed. No disagreements here. And by the way, also, like on sites like, so on owner's box, there are no defenses. But when I was building lineups, you guys saw I did a lineup building show for FanDuel and DraftKings earlier. I was getting to a good amount of commander's defense, particularly on FanDuel. Off the top of my head, I had like 40% of commander's defense in my top 150 lineups. Still got to a lot of Justin Fields, though, and most rostered player here. Still like his fantasy potential. As far as Sam Howell, we're getting to 40% of him in the flex and 25% of him in the multiplier spots of 75% of Sam Howe. So lots of Sam Howe, lots of Justin Fields as well. These are the two guys we're getting to the most of overall. What else here? Running backs getting to a good amount of Khalil Herbert. And Brian Robinson, although actually underweights the field a little bit on Robinson, he's projected for 36.6% ownership. We're getting to 30% of them here. What about Gibson? Overweight to Gibson. So if you're looking for a pivot in large field tournaments, this looks like a reasonable one to make. Brian Robinson projected for 36.6% ownership. Antonio Gibson projected for 183 
So Brian Robinson, does he project better for us? Absolutely. We've got Robinson project for 14 fantasy points. We've got Gibson project for eight fantasy points. But when you consider the difference in ownership as well as the difference in price, this is a way to differentiate some lineups going to Antonio Gibson as opposed to Brian Robinson. On the Bears side of the game, let's see. Roshan Johnson, a little bit overweight to him, although still getting to Khalil Herbert as well. So no real leverage there in the Bears running game. Pass catching options. Talked about Curtis Samuel. He's a contrarian-ish option that I like getting to a good amount. And then as far as other ones, Jahan Dotson, a little bit overweight to the field on him. What about Bears pass catchers? I feel like I might be underweight to a bunch of these guys. A little bit underweight to Darnell Mooney, underweight to the field on DJ Moore. Yeah, so what we're really banking on here based on this lineup construction, we're looking for a rushing upside from Justin Fields because these lineups – are more so built around fields naked and then heavy commander stacks. So if we look at the players that we are underweight to the field to, uh, not really fair to say underweight to the field on Sam Howell because we have a bunch of them in the multiplier spot. But DJ Moore were underweight to the field to, Terry McLaurin were underweight to the field to, Brian Robinson on the whole were underweight to, and then, uh, yeah, Terry McLaurin here again because that's him in the multiplier spot. So uh, when we're looking at quarterbacks, Sam Howell mostly being paired with like Curtis Samuel as a top pass catching option. And then from the Bears side of the game, not really seeing many of the pass catchers stand out. So looking for him more so naked, Justin Fields. Uh, I guess Cole Komet is somebody who would be the best pass catching option that we have in our projections and data here to go alongside with Justin Fields. Only project for 22.9% ownership. So Cole Komet, not a bad option there. If you guys have any other questions about the showdown slate, throw them into the YouTube chat. We could definitely answer those. If not, we could start looking at the main slate. But just a quick other overview here of our top projected lineups. And then uh, G Stu following up said he likes fields of some of the lower tier pass catchers. Yeah, I mean, what are we considering? I mean, Cole Komet probably wouldn't really be uh, considered lower tier. But let's see, who are some of the players who are the lesser pass catchers for Chicago that we're getting to here, if any. We do have 3% of Robert Tunyon. That's not really saying a whole much. Yeah, nothing else really standing out, at least not in the lineups that I've built here. But I'd be curious, Chief Stu. Let me know who it is that you find that you like getting to from, uh, from the Bears as a, as a cheap pass catcher, maybe. Let's look at the main slate now. And whoops. Wrong site. Let's go to owner's box and the main slate. Just reset these to... Unless unless you guys really have a strong feel on what kind of stack options you want me to use, I'll go... Let's just go 50-50 for QB1, QB2. We're still going to like naturally get to some triple stacks, but let's just see. If we just go QB1, QB, uh, QB plus 1, QB plus 2... And it was like 40% of our stacks with a run back. No build some lineups based on that. See what ends up popping up. Then we'll sim these, see what the best overall lineups are. Also, let's check out some bets for today while these lineups are being generated. Do you guys have any bets you really like for the slate? I'm going to check out Odd Chopper while we're building out lineups and see what projects best for us. All right, let's look at NFL for today. Doing this on my other computer over here while because you know don't want to overload my computer i'm making it do too much stuff at once slow down the uh, lineup generating in the semi all right so some lineup some uh, bets that are looking good for us in odd shopper let's see sort by ev all right so if you guys are looking for a bet for tonight what is looking good Sam Howell under 31 and a half passing attempts. So if you guys are picking the commanders to win the game, I think this is like a decent same game parlay place, uh, same game parlay piece. The over under for Sam Howell is over under 31 and a half passing attempts. It's plus money on the under. If you're picking the commanders to win the game, maybe like commanders money line or even the commander spread minus six and a half with the Sam Howell under 31 and a half passing attempts because you're playing into a scenario where the commanders win by a decent amount, at least in that game script. So that's something in our projections that stands out. That I think you can find some uh, some other ways to create some value on. All right. Owner's box. The main slate this weekend is 20% to first. So we'll run the sim for that now. G-Stew following up. Uh, 
I guess he was just saying other than more. And then for single entry tonight, would you find it unwise to fade both running backs? So for me, a lot of the lineups I'm building, I'm finding I'm getting exposure to running backs in some kind of way. It's going to be different across different sites. You saw like in the lineups I just built here, we're getting to uh, Antonio Gibson as a contrarian play. We're getting to some exposure to Roshan Johnson, getting some exposure to Khalil Ho uh, Herbert. When I was building out DraftKings lineups earlier, I was getting to a good amount of the running backs as well. So this doesn't exactly directly answer your question, but I'm getting to a lot of running back exposure. So I think that it's unwise to fade them just because I think most of the top options in tonight's game are the running backs relative to exposure by the field, the ownership projection relative to our projections and the results I'm seeing in the Sims. I, I think you do want to prioritize getting to some of the running backs today. Going to be different across different sites, but uh, Roshan Johnson, I think, is a very interesting contrarian option in general for this late. All right, almost done simming here. And then we get check on some of the results from the main slate. Keep in mind, owner's box, it is a super flex. So you can play two quarterbacks in these lineups. See what some of the top lineups are looking like. Uh, QB plus one, QB plus, uh, sorry, QB plus two, QB plus two, QB plus two, QB plus one. Yeah, so most of the lineups that are best for us look like they are QB double stacks. Let's favor at the top 150, and then we can start to dig into some of the exposures here. But first, our number one overall highest projected lineup here, it is a Dolphins Jets stack. So we've got uh, Tua with A-Chan and Tyree Kill as stacking options. And then on the other side, we have Zach Wilson with Garrett Wilson and Tyler Conklin as his pass catching options. Other players filling out the lineup, Joe Mixon, Wondell Robinson, and then uh, Robert Woods in here. So that lineup has a 348% SIM ROI, at least relative to all these other lineups I've simmed against. So that's the one that I would identify as my best lineup. If I was playing one single lineup in the big contest on owner's box, as of right now, giving our data, this is the one that I'd be going with. Highest projected lineup. Let's also check that out. Highest projected lineup, which I think kind of is a, a good indicator of where our projections are for this slate. It's really heavy towards the Dolphins for the main slate. So like our number one overall highest projected lineup here by fantasy points. And three of our top four highest projected lineups are a Dolphin stack in some sort of way. But this one here, uh, Tua with A-Chain and no other stack here. And then Jalen Hurts with Dallas Goddard. So Tua, Kamara, Achan, Robinson, Michael Wilson, Dallas Goddard, James Conner, Joe Mixon, Jalen Hurts. But this is also why, talking about before, you want to prioritize Sim ROI over raw projection because we just sorted by raw projection and none of these lineups are in my top lineup. So here's one. By the most part, though, the highest projected lineups aren't necessarily the best ones to play in tournaments because there's other things to consider like ownership and then also other uh, stuff as well, like how well your lineups correlate with each other. Exposures. Boy, we are loving Wendell Robinson this weekend. We have him projected for 11.13 fantasy points, and that was enough to get him into 76% of my highest projected lineups. What is his price? What is his price this weekend? All right, Robinson... Looking him up on the app right here on my phone while I'm talking. Yeah, Robinson, $3,600. So near min price for Robinson. I really do think he stands out. And if if you guys watched the, the live before lock show that I did on Monday for the Monday night football game between the uh, Giants and... Who, oh, the Giants played the Seahawks on Monday night football. Wanda Robinson was my favorite contrarian play on the entire slate. And he's more popular now. He's projected for 19%. It's crazy. Wondell Robinson is projected for more ownership on this weekend's main slate than he's projected for on Monday's single game showdown slate. But that aside, I really liked Robinson on Monday night football, and I'm still going to like him again for the main slate, primarily because who else is Daniel Jones going to throw to with any talent in this offense? And you know the Giants are playing from behind. They suck. So with that in mind, they're going to be throwing the ball. Robinson is a preferred target of, of Daniel Jones. And he's been pretty productive when he's been on the field. He's not dropping passes. He's running routes more now than he was a couple weeks ago when he was returning initially from the ACL injury. So uh, I think Robinson's a really good low-cost option really everywhere this weekend. 
at running back here. We're getting to a good amount of A-Chan and Joe Mixon. So I need more information on the Dolphins running back scenario because as of right now, it's really hard for me to back a super chalky A-Chan because we don't even know if he's going to start over Mostert. He had less than 10 carries last week. What was the final... What was the final stat line for A-Chan? A-Chan last week ran for... I know he had over 100 yards. That's great. But only eight carries, right? Like, how how projectable is it for him? If he's only going to be getting eight carries, can we just expect him to average 10-plus yards per carry? Point being is, I, I want more confirmation that he's going to start and be the go-to guy over Mostert before I'm just firing up a super popular A-chan. So right now, our projections are assuming that A-chan starts and is the guy because... Look, we have HN project for 16.77 fantasy points. We have Mostert projected for. I hope I could spell his name. Or can I just not? Oh, you know why? Because he's not in one of my top 150 lineups. That's why he's not showing up here. All right, I'll have to look on the other. I think we most are projected for like 12 fantasy points this week off the top of my head. That aside, I couldn't find him on this page because he isn't in any of my top 150. But A-Chan here, I, I understand I'm getting to a lot of them here in The Sims. I want more information. I'm not going to say it's a no for me on A-Chan. It's a, I need more information before I determine this is somebody I really want to invest in this weekend. Getting to Joe Mixon at running back. And then pretty past A-Chan and Mixon, looks like there's a handful of running backs here. Camara. David Montgomery, all making it into lineups. As far as QBs are concerned, we are getting to, let's just filter by QB. If you guys are ever using our Sims tool, which also, once again, if you're just joining the show now, if you sign up at Owner's Box for the first time using the link below, you get one week totally free of all the uh, data and tools we have at stochastic.com. So our contest generator, where you can build your lineups on our site, simulation tool, where you can simulate those lineups, and then also just you know player projections, ownership projections, all that stuff, all included in our football package. Uh, but if you ever want to use the Sims tool and just filter to find individual players, use the filter here, and then you could find which players you get the most exposure to. Stuff like different positions, you could look players up. Quarterback exposures. Getting to Tua and Jalen Hurts primarily, north of 30% of each of them. And also keep in mind, you're just naturally going to get to more quarterbacks on owner's box and like a DraftKings or a FanDuel because of the fact that this is a super flex. You play two QBs on this site. So Tua and Hurts each in 30 plus percent of lineups. And then we've got some uh, Patrick Mahomes, Daniel Jones, Matt Stafford, Josh Dobbs. So kind of a mix and match of like low cost options, expensive options. But the guys that looks like we really want to be building around a QB on owner's box is going to be Hertz and Tua. Let's do the same deal for running back. Running back. Yeah, pretty tight group of running backs, right? We're getting to A-Chan and Mixon, each north of 50%, north of 20% of Kamara and Montgomery. 10, about 13% of Javante Williams. We don't even know if he's going to play. He did practice today, which is a positive sign. If he's out, we're going to want to look at Samaj P. Ryan. But as of right now, expected to be in getting to 13%, which does have us underweight to the field here. But in general, I mean, we're so far overweight to A-Chan and Mixon in this build. Not really a lot of room for other running backs. Who are we underweight to? Yeah, underweight to Bijan Robinson, who's projected for 17% ownership. We got to about 5% of him. We're underweight to field on Swift, underweight on Connor, underweight on Henry, who finally broke out last week. But yeah, we're tight, tight group uh, at running back. We're actually only overweight to two running backs. I just swear by leverage. So leverage is the difference between the projected ownership and the exposure we're getting to. Legitimately, overweight to only two running backs, underweight to everybody else. Wide receiver. Let's look at wide receiver. We know we're getting to a lot of Robinson. What about past him now? Kind of the same, by the way, as running back, where the ownership is so concentrated at the top, there's only so much room for more of these guys to be well overweight to. But past Robinson, Michael Wilson, Robert Woods. So it looks like we're getting to a lot of cheap guys at wide receiver because none of these price tags are all that exorbitant. If I pull the owner's box at back up, we had a $3,600 Robinson. Michael Wilson is priced at, what is the price point of Michael Wilson? Michael Wilson is $3,800. And then Robert Woods is 4100 
So our three most rostered wide receivers here, all cheap, which is what enables us to pay up for the Tua's and the Jalen Hurts of the world, which is where our QB exposure was focused. But if we are looking to pay up at wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Tyree Kill are two players that are a little bit overweight too. 16% Jefferson ownership project. We got to 20% of them. Tyree Kill, a little bit more overweight, which makes sense, right? If we're playing a bunch of Tua, of course, we're going to have a lot of Tyree Kill in there as well. I'm really interested to see what ends up happening with the Rams wide receiver room. Cooper Cup expected to play this week. Another one we need more information on. Cooper Cup's return to to practice. I'm assuming he plays. We still need official word on that. In addition to that, we also need to find out how many snaps is he going to play. I assume he's going to be limited to the point where we don't want to play Cooper Cup, but we'll be on the field enough to the point where we're like, I'm not dying to play like a Nakua, who, sure, getting to him in 16% of lineups, but in previous weeks, I've been like aggressively playing Nakua. Who are we underweight to at wide receiver? No, like aggressive stands, but 8% on Michael Thomas by the field, hardly getting to any exposure to him. Adam Thielen, is this going to be the end of the Adam Thielen train? He's been incredible to start the year, but he's gotten to be expensive now. Thielen's price point is, yeah, 5,200 now on owner's box. Not like crazy, but definitely more than it's been. And also keep in mind what the wide receiver price points are on owner's box. Justin Jefferson is $7,900, the most expensive wide receiver on the slate. So the Adam Thielen 5,200 price tag, 5,200 isn't the same on owner's box as is on like a DraftKings or a FanDuel. It's, it's like a fairly expensive price tag. Thielen is like the 15th or so most expensive wide receiver on owner's box this week. Something along those lines. Underweight's the field on Thielen, underweight on Michael Thomas, underweight on Rondell Moore, underweight on KJ Osborne, underweight on Burks. Not exactly sure if he's going to be playing or not. Haven't seen a definitive update on him. That's what we're looking at for underweight wide receivers overweight. So we looked at wide receivers we have the most exposure to, but relative to ownership, who are we going to be rooting for here? Robinson, Wilson, uh, Rasheed Rice, who looked great in week one. Looked like he had a real connection with Patrick Mahomes. We've seen that drop off a little bit now that Travis Kelsey's back in the mix. But yeah, I mean, those wide receivers are a real crapshoot for the Chiefs, right? You get Kelsey a tight end, and then who knows where you're getting out of any of the wide receivers. But Rasheed Rice is the one we're getting the most of. Decent looking contrarian play here. Only project for 9% ownership, getting to 18%. So if you're looking for a contrarian wide receiver, I could definitely advocate for Rasheed Rice this weekend. Let's look at tight ends, and then we are just about done. If you guys have any other questions or comments for me before we wrap up, because I'm going to be signing off in like 90 seconds, speak now. Forever hold your peace. Throw that into the YouTube chat. Tight end, we are getting to kind of a mishmash here. Nobody north of 20%, and a good to see we're getting to the studs at tight end. 19% Hawkinson, 19% Kelsey overweight to both of them. This is pretty appealing, actually. Only 13% ownership going to Kelsey. So it looks like we're overweight to the field on Mahomes, overweight to Rasheed Rice, overweight to Kelsey. I like that as a stack, getting uh, Mahomes with a double stack of those two. And then TJ Hawkinson, he's somebody else you can make a double stack with Justin Jefferson with. Pretty expensive at that point, though. But getting to Zach Ertz, although underweight to the field, Ertz, super, super popular. He is projected for 22% ownership on owner's box, most rostered tight end on the slate, followed by Chiga Konku and then Sam Laporta. Let's see, uh, Voodoo Ranger, he is saying uh, DJ Moore, oh, uh, um, he's saying uh, Moody over four targets. Is that what you're, um, did you mean Moore or Moody? Betting on Moody for over four targets. Let's see. Uh, let's, uh, I'm looking at our projections to see what we have here. Ah, I'm not going to be able to find it by the time that the show ends here. Oh, Mooney. Okay. I should have figured that. Yeah. Mooney. All right. I was trying to figure out what you meant by Moody, but yeah, I was thinking DJ Moore. Yeah. Mooney. What, what's Mooney's target share been like lately? All right. Darnell Mooney. Targets. All right. So what have we seen him by game? Mooney has had, I don't think that's a bad look actually. So we had seven targets week one, gets injured week two. So let's throw that one in the garbage, right? Gets injured week two. Week three, uh, or sorry, he gets injured week two, returns for week three, but kind of is coming back from injury. 
four targets last week caught all four. Yeah, I can get behind that. I think Mooney, I think Mooney over four targets makes sense there. Voodoo Ranger. Tight ends. So lots of ownership going to Ertz, Chigakonku, Laporta, and Hawkinson. And who we ultimately got to the most of here is Hawkinson, Kelsey, Ertz, but still underweight to the field on him. But that is going to do it for us today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you've not done yet, do me a favor. Like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want more information on tonight's slate, check me out. In an hour, I'm going to be breaking down the slate with my friend Eric Lindquist. 6 to se- uh, 6.15 to 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Myself and Eric doing the uh, uh, deep dive for the NFL Showdown slate. And then followed by Lofty and Neil bringing us home on Live Before Lock. So see you guys then. If you guys uh, want more, like I see Malakar saying he's late. Yeah, you're a little late, but Malakar, get hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to be back on this on this uh, YouTube channel talking about the game again. So come back then. I'm sure I'll be seeing you in chat. Good luck today, guys. Hope to see you in a little bit. And like and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Peace out.